hello and welcome back to season two of an uncertain future this is part two of this season i'm excited i hope you are too so let's not talk much longer and just get straight into it i mean gay into it of course I think I want to keep it. His words seemed to echo and linger in the suddenly very silent room. Three pairs of eyes stared at him in shock and surprise as the information sank in. For a long moment, everything stopped. Time seemed to be frozen and Kemma wasn't even sure they were breathing as he observed them with growing worry. I... It just... He butchered his words in a clumsy attempt to categorize their reaction. Koro was the first to break out of his frozen state, carefully taking the Omega's hand and wiping his tears away. He didn't dare get up his hopes just yet. Of course, he would be thrilled to have this child with Kemma, but there was a good reason why this had never been the plan to begin with. The Alpha didn't want the Omega to push past his limits just because he thought he had to. Are you absolutely certain? You don't have to, you know that, right? If you do it, it shouldn't be for anyone else and only if you're sure. He spoke calmly, his touch tender and warm. It made Kenma's heart skip a beat and eased his worries. A small smile cracked through the facade, and he let out a small, nervous chuckle. Of course not. There's never been something I was so unsure of in my life. He leaned into his touch before pulling away again, looking at all three of them individually. But I have to make a decision. There's no easy way out, and I think that with you as my mates, I think I might be able to do it, as long as you don't leave my side. He could feel the warm love trickling into him through the bonds, could practically hear Bokota's thoughts as the Alpha was itching to engulf him into his arms again. He motioned for him to wait just a bit longer, just so he could finish his thought. Don't get me wrong, I'm still terrified of this. I've been panicking for almost two weeks now without so much as a clear thought for the majority of the time, but I'm terrified either way. Ideally, this would have never happened, but it did, and now I'm just... I think I can't forget it. I don't want to ask myself what ifs moving forward, and I know this might be a foolish reason, but... I just... I... Akashi smiled sympathetically. The worried crease between his brows still present as he chewed nervously on his bottom lip. It's okay. I mean, you don't have to decide now. I know it's not much time, but still... Kemma shook his head. No, I do much longer and i will lose it i thought about it after we talked i thought about it a lot and and now that we have the first picture new tears welled up again and he cursed under his breath a hundred percent blaming the pregnancy hormones maybe i'm already too emotional but but if you stay with me and help me as you said. Of course, Kemma. We'll spoil and pamper you the whole nine... Well, six months. No, scratch that. We'll spoil you for as long as you want us to, right? The other two nodded. Naturally. Akashi smiled. Most of my work can be done from home anyways, and it is still a few months till the next season for you starts. 
He looked at Bogoto. Meaning we have plenty of time to figure out our plans for things like paternity leave. We gathered some information on that already anyway, since at least part of this was the plan. Koda chuckled before his eyes softened again. We already told you plenty of times, but I'll say it as much as you need me to. We'll be there for you every step of the way, no matter what. He couldn't finish his speech before Kemma locked his arms around him again, crying into his shirt. The gesture broke the unspoken tension and served as an invitation for Bokuto, who closed his arms around the both of them while Akashi settled for observing the chaos and silently wiping away his own tears. Don't cry, Ken Ken. We got you. The ace gently wrapped a soothing scent of oak into Kemma's hoodie, who just sobbed harder. So sorry. <laughs> Pregnancy hormones. The elf's laugh was muffled as he kissed the Omega on his head. It was like an unspoken agreement between them not to burst out in joy just yet. It was part of every one of them that was thrilled over the turn of events and the idea of having a child taking after the blonde Omega. But none of them had forgotten how hard this was for him. How could they? There was still one week time to change his mind, and while they didn't think he would, they also didn't want to pressure him in case he wanted to. Slowly, Kemma freed himself from their arms. Damn. I'm a mess. Just wait until the cravings kick in. Koda smiled, which earned him a light punch on his upper arm. Ow! What? I'm thrilled about everything that'll make you eat something that is not instant ramen for once. In fact, I'll go make a meal plan right away, which your doctor can approve of on your next appointment. He ran off before Kemma could punch him again into the hallway, down the hall, shouting back in their direction, asking Akashi for his books. In the office, the upper shelf to the left. He shook his head slightly, knowing fully well that Kuro knew that if he had thought about it for longer than five seconds. I'll go and sketch a future appointments for checkups and counsel, particularly regarding the meal plan with Dr. Kimura, if you don't mind. Kemma shook his head. Of course he didn't mind. He was grateful. After all of this, he just let himself fall into Bokuto's arms, who luckily caught him, despite not being given any warning. Kemma groaned. I hate this already. The ace knew he didn't mean it, and deeply breathed in the soft scent of petrichor that for the first time in weeks was almost as light as usual again, with an underlining hint of a soft milky scent. His heartbeat accelerated and he was no longer able to hide his excitement. Kemma, you smell pregnant! He felt almost giddy with joy as he hugged him tighter. The Omega groaned in loving exasperation before turning around and motioning for the taller to pick him up. The other gladly complied, peppering his face with kisses before asking, Where to? Nest, I'm tired. Right away. He grinned proudly as he carried his mate up the stairs and into their bedroom. Kemma snuggled up into the nest between the pillows and plushies, pulling apple pie into his arms. Do you need anything else? Halfway awake, the Omega looked up at him yawning before suddenly his demeanor changed and his eyes turned pleading. Can I have your jersey? Bogota's eyes grew white 
He nodded enthusiastically and went to get the item. Seeing his boyfriends, particularly his Omegas, specifically the smaller in his jersey, was the best. They looked stunning, no matter what they were wearing, but no matter who of the three asked, it always filled him with immense pride to see them in his clothes. He suspected it was an awful thing, but then again, Kuro wasn't as insistent about it and would gladly wear Bokuto's hoodie to make him happy. A soft smile replaced the white grin as he walked back past the office and saw Kuro deeply engrossed in a pile of books. It warmed his heart. They were finally on the same page again, together and without any misunderstandings between them. Now, everything would go back to normal with a little addition and a tinge of excitement added to the mix. Here you go. Kema lazily reached for the piece of clothing and changed without much thought. The alpha couldn't help but stare at his belly in anticipation. If they would truly keep it, he would start showing soon. His heart skipped a beat in nervous excitement. Oh, even your scent is full of nervous energy. Kema whined. Just spit it out already. The taller climbed into bed beside him, slowly inching closer, which the Omega commented with an annoyed glare. He hated when his mates went straight forward with him. He couldn't read minds. Can I... Can I touch your belly? That made him falter. Surprised, the blonde looked up. There is not much there yet. Still, if it's too much, or if you don't feel comfortable with it, I understand. Bokuto quickly backtracked. Kema thought about it for a second, and to his own surprise, found that he didn't mind at all. He carefully lifted the jersey again to expose his belly. It felt weird, somehow more vulnerable than usual. A strange, foreign anxiety blossomed in the back of his mind, making Bokuto pause and sensed it through the bond. It's okay. Just feel new. Bokuto tilted his head to the side, slightly confused. As soon as his fingers grazed over the skin, the strange feeling faded. His gentle touch sent waves of soothing warmth through his system, and the scent of milk and cotton intensified. Kemma let out a soft purr, leaning into his touch. The room was coated in comfortable silence and soothing scents. It was a stark contrast to the usually so energetic and chaotic atmosphere Bokuto and Kuro brought to the table. Kemma sighed in contentment. I love you. Warm happiness flooded their bond as Bokuto gently tucked down the jersey again and engulfed the Omega in his arms. I love you too. He nuzzled his nose against Kema's neck, breathing in the soft mix of petrichor and cotton, and scenting him with his own fragrance of warm oak wood and earth. Within mere minutes, the Omega drifted away to sleep. Pokoto gently drew patterns on Kema's arm and played with his hair while observing his sleeping form. His eyes were filled with affection and relief as he saw the stress fall off the Omega in his sleep. Soft steps echoed from the hallway and interrupted the gentle symphony created by their breathing and heartbeats. Bokuto blinked up at the door and was met with a beautiful combination of sea green and icy blue. Akashi smiled softly. Is he asleep? The words, though barely more than a whisper, resonated in the silence. Bokuto nodded. A soft sigh and a tinge of anxiety lingered like a constant, subtle presence as if someone was tugging at the string connecting them. He won't be alright. We will make sure of it. Akashi nodded, but Bogota noticed the little hesitation. Before he could add something else in an attempt to soothe his anxiety, the darkened Omega left again. Bokuto's gaze lingered at the door and he pulled Kemba tighter. They could do this. Somehow.
Thank you so much for watching this second part to the end. I hope you liked it as well. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like. And don't forget to subscribe because there is more content coming out daily. To be more specific, the next part for this part, this video series, <laughs> will premiere tomorrow, if everything goes according to plan. So tell me your favorite quote under the pinned comment or talk to me in the post video discussion channel on the Discord. Link is in the video description. A special thanks goes out to my nerdy Neckos. And now that we have reached 10 channel members, which is crazy, this video they actually get in advance. So if you also sometimes, I cannot promise all the time, want some early access, consider joining the nerdy Neckos and become a channel member. Or check out these videos. They are pretty cool. And now have a wonderful and amazing day. Step three, you grow hard about what you want to be. Step four. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up.